A real no-joke pub brawl is one of the most chaotic, scariest, and most dangerous things around. Thanks for joining us on today's active self-protection lesson. My name's John Correa. I believe this is the first video ever on active self-protection out of Tasmania. Today's active self-protection lesson is made possible thanks to the generosity of sponsors like LuckyGunner.com. Please check out Lucky Gunner for all your ammunition needs. This one's a doozy, friend, so strap in tight. Dude that just put his hat on, you can see him yipping with these guys who are just off camera by the door of this bar. You can see him kind of having at it with them a little bit. Now this dude's gonna step out and just drill him right in the face with a straight left. Now, I don't know what was said there, and the news story says they don't know what was said there to get this started because they haven't found any of these guys. Now, pay attention to the guy in the hat that just walked up and is kind of keeping things at bay in the gray shirt and this guy in the blue A-frame. They're gonna be very important. You can see I've sped it up just for the sake of time. The guy in the blue with the sunglasses is like, hey guys, I don't want any problems, whatever. And notice that our dude that just got punched is still sitting on the floor. But they're gonna start keep yipping and the guy in the blue, you know, light blue kind of A-frame is gonna be like, hey man, I don't, you know, want any problems, whatever, but the argument's gonna get more. And then when this dude finally gets up, guy in the hat is gonna kind of push him out of the way, but he's not gonna have it. And dude who took a punch to the face is gonna go get a pool cue. And now he is going to pick up a pool ball and he is gonna wing that pool ball at these dudes who he doesn't like and almost hit one of them. And that is going to start the brawl. Dude who almost took a pool ball to the head is going to step in there and it is just going to become an absolute full on bar fight. Now what you're gonna notice here is if you pay attention, there's the dude in the you know blue shirt. He's winging punches, but our guy that was in the hat is staying out of the way. Now you're gonna see this one's just gonna keep getting uglier and uglier with more people in there and it's really hard to see who's doing what, when, and where. But notice here that this first guy is gonna get kind of beat up a little bit. And, and where did this guy come from? I don't know, but the guy in the orange jacket is with the dudes who were just off camera. He was one of those off camera guys when things got going just a minute ago. Now watch what goes down here as, as dude in the orange jacket's gonna come over and just absolutely sucker punch that guy, hit him right on the easy button and knock him absolutely cold out. Now, it's gonna keep going. We're gonna see drinks spilled here and thrown our way. Now, guys are coming outside. Dude uh, in the, the white and brown shirt, he got jumped by these dudes and now he's on the floor and we're not done yet, friends. If you look on the right now, dude in the blue shirt is going to come out with some chairs and get a pool ball thrown at him and wing a chair off down the road here. Our original guy's coming out with more pool balls there and he falls down the steps and is gonna get hit in the back of the head with a pool ball, I think, by dude in the orange jacket. Now again, they're gonna fight in the doorway and kinda nobody wants to commit too much to it because there's a lot of pool balls and pool sticks and bad juju flinging around here. So our, our guy who took the original punch goes back, get some more pool balls because we gotta throw those around the neighborhood a little bit more and make sure everybody knows that. I hope we all understand that throwing a, a, a pool cue at someone is absolutely aggravated assault. This is a pretty serious stuff that can clearly cause great bodily injury or death. So everything's cooled off a little bit here, but now notice here that we're gonna start getting guys who have just you know, taken a whole bunch of beatings up and, and everybody is kinda sorta separated. And so we're gonna speed it up for the sake of time. But what I want us to kinda pay attention to here is the fact that these guys are gonna kinda just wheedle their way around. It's not quite done. They're gonna come back a little bit more, give each other a hard time, but that's where it ends. I told you that was crazy and scary and dangerous. I've got an interesting question for you today. Would love to have a discussion in the comments. Which of the sponsors of Active Self Protection do you use most often? We only accept sponsors whose products I use and trust my life and my family to, but I'm curious what your experience has been. Who's your favorite sponsor of Active Self Protection? Let's talk about it in the comments today. Lessons time, everyone. I think most of the lessons in this one are about staying the heck out of bars, staying out of bar fights, and not getting drunk in public and running your mouth. It's probably the biggest thing here because you see this guy is just yipping at this group of dudes and I don't know who started the problem, but I can tell you that de-escalation, escape, and avoidance is one of the most significant things that you can do as a self-defender to keep yourself out of this kinds of problems. So if these guys have a beef with you, hey guys, my bad, let me buy you a beer and then get the heck out of the bar is the way that you keep from getting these kinds of fights started, friends. Now, second thing I do want to notice of our dude who took the punch is that he let this guy inside his reactionary gap. He let this guy with his hands down and a beer in his hand 
inside of a couple of feet of him and he was able to swing this punch before any kind of reaction could occur because he let him inside his reaction barrier. It's going to take when this guy starts his swing 0.25 seconds. I slowed it down by a factor of four there, but when he threw that punch without telegraphing it, it was a quarter of a second. There is no way he could respond fast enough or react fast enough to get his hands up or to, you know, respond to that punch. It is physiologically impossible. So he was going to take that punch and take the bloody nose because of the error he made letting the guy get that close to him. So when you're managing unknown contacts, or especially if you've had some hostility and you're having a little verbal disagreement with somebody, of course, dis you know, verbal judo and those kinds of things, very important. But at the very least, keep people outside of your reactionary gap so that you have a chance to defend yourself if you absolutely need to. Now, he just paid a social price for that, but at least the guy left him there. Now, of course, I do want to pay attention to these two guys. Number one, like I said earlier, the guy right here in the gray shirt and the hat and the dude in the white tank top, or blue tank top, rather. Those are the guys that you really want to pay attention to here for a very different approach. The guy in the hat and the gray polo shirt is going to stay out of the fray the entire time. He's going to try to keep people apart, but he's not throwing punches. He's not letting anybody get close to him, and he's not you know, uh, getting involved in the fray. The guy in the tank top, on the other hand, is going to wade right in there. My guess he's the friend of the guy who's on the ground right now. And he is going to absolutely take a, an absolute tune wailing on him. And that's pretty significant. So again, be like the dude in the polo shirt, not like the dude in the tank top. I do like here that the guy in the tank top starts with the, you know, his hands out and that posture, that surrender. Hey, I don't want any problems. That's that palms out, fingers splayed, hands wide posture that we talk about as a de-escalation technique. And I think that is very wise. But recognize some people will not be de-escalated. You can't make somebody calm down. They can do that. Certainly if you ask them to calm down, they're not going to calm down. But I do think talking here is good and wise and whatever. Okay, man, you know, whatever. Guy got in your way, whatever. Let me buy a beer, cool everybody off. We can all be friends, okay? This is cool. But instead, it seems that the arguments get more and more. And sometimes that's going to happen. Dudes are going to want to fight. They just won't be de-escalated. Escalated. That's one of the reasons I say don't go stupid places with stupid people at stupid times and do stupid things because now this guy gets up and now he really wants to fight because he's offended and he's going to start doing some really stupid stuff here. My guess is that he's drunk and therefore that's causing this problem. Drunk people are stupid people. And so you got to recognize you're breaking rules of stupid going to bars with a bunch of drunk people that are going to do stupid stuff. Now, he picks up a pool cue here and picks up a pool ball. That is absolutely right now. He is now arming himself with weapons. And those are both absolutely deadly weapons. If you've been on the channel a while, we have seen a pool cue kill somebody on this channel. And certainly, if you take that pool ball and you throw it at somebody, it is absolutely able to do great bodily harm or even kill somebody. And that right there, you see how close that pool ball came to the guy that's in the bottom right-hand corner's head. I mean, that ball missed him by inches. If that had been an inch over or so, it could easily have killed him. This is aggravated assault of the highest order. Again, your best answer to that in this moment is don't engage, get the heck out of there. Just run off. Now he didn't, so now his buddy tries to get him to go away, but when the guy comes in and throws a punch at him, because of course he's upset about it, notice that it is really on. Once again, notice the difference here between our two guys. That they're right over here on the right. You can see our, you know, our tank top blue shirt guys right in the middle of the fight and our ball cap polo shirt guys staying out of the fray. I think that's definitely the safer bet here. Probably even better to just get the heck out of the bar unless you were an employee or something like that. Now there's this crazy fight going on and guys, there's, you know, not a lot of lessons here about not having bar brawls, okay? Well, how am I going to defend myself against that? You're going to get the heck out of the danger zone. And what if my buddy is in the midst of that? Well, you know what? Honestly, I think your best answer here, if you got friends that aren't a part of the aggressive team here, your best bet's probably to start OC spraying everyone, is quite frankly the answer, and get everybody to start being diminished so people stop getting hurt. Now, I get it that that's going to cause some problems and probably get that bar cleared, but notice here that otherwise what happens is this dude just sucker punches that guy, hits him right on the easy button, and this is one of the big reasons to avoid these fights, because you might get knocked out with one punch. The guy was doing okay before that, but that one punch literally turned the lights off on that guy, and that can absolutely happen to you. So that's why you want to stay out of these. And that happens again to this guy who is in the, um, in the white shirt and the brown shirt on the left. He comes in and he gets demolished while the guy on the, the original aggressor, the guy that took the original punch, 
actually hits his, the other dude with a pool cue, which again, I've seen a pool cue kill somebody on this channel. And therefore, I want to just tell you, get away from this stuff. Now, they're going to keep winging stuff at each other and all that. And I just want to say, guys, the biggest thing that we learn out of this is stay away from stupidity like this. And, and the way that you do that is you do, just follow the rules of stupid. If your buddy is, you know, uh, getting stupid at a bar, one of the best things you can do is carry what Jack Clemens, my friend, calls a my bad 20. And that $20 bill can get you out of a lot of problems. Hey, man, my bad. I got 20 bucks here. Let me buy you guys a couple beers. Or, hey, you're totally right, bro. We're going to get the heck out of here. You have a good one. Because you're never going to see that guy again. So there's no sense having a social fight with him. There's no sense getting up in his grill or getting punched in the face or having a brawl like this over somebody that you will literally never see again when it could quite literally change your life forever. So being a self-defender here means not getting into these kinds of scraps. It means staying away from them. So then that way you're not trying to, you know, test your Kung Fu on a bunch of drunken idiots because I don't think that helps. I do think in this instance that as this thing gets brewing and we start having these big problems, so a, a good can of OC spray, like the Palm or something like that, to just hit the couple of guys who need it, get everybody a little bit of jerk sauce so that they're diminished, so that they can't see what you're doing, and then getting the heck out of there could save you from getting beamed with a pool cue, and I think that's a very valuable force multiplier to have in those kinds of instances. But these guys are all pretty much just a bunch of dummies doing dumb drunk stuff. I don't recommend you get involved in that, so let's stay away from them as we seek to cover our ASP.